Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss an easy practice question of code set. The name of the problem is walk on the axis and its code is A and U W T A. This is how the problem looks like. First is the statement of the problem followed by the input and output statements. Constraints of the variables are also given. A sample example with its output and explanation is also given. At last is the submit button. To submit the problem, you have to click on this submit button. Now let's discuss the problem more clearly. In this question, it is given that there are n plus 1 lights which are initially turned on. They are placed on the x axis at coordinates 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0 to n, 0. You have to turn off all of them one by one but by following a special pattern. You start from light 0 and move alternatively to right, then to left, then to right and so on to the farthest turned on light. Once you arrive to the farthest light, you turn it off. You perform this as long as there is at least one light turned on. Now, to move from light x to light x minus 1 or x plus 1, you need cost 1. We have to find out what's the total cost to turn all lights on. The input given will contain two integers t and n. The first line t which denotes the number of test cases. Each test case has an integer n in the next line. The output for each test case should be a single integer displaying the distance walked. This is the sample input and output. It contains two test cases with two values of n, 1 and 2. The explanation for the second test case is given in the question. You can read it for better understanding by pausing the video. Let's move towards solving the question by observing it carefully. One very useful way to solve problems is to see what happens for a relatively small input. This can lead to key for solving larger problems. Let's start with n is equal to 1. It is marked by an arrow when you move from a light to an adjacent one. Obviously, each time it happens, the solution is increased by 1. So for n is equal to 1, the solution looks like 0 to 1 to 0. As we travel from 0 to 1 and again to 0. Let's see what happens for n is equal to 3. We travel from 0 to 3 and then again to 0, then to 1, and 1 to 2, and then to 1, again. Let's focus on the last three elements from the path. The pattern looks the same as the one for n is equal to 1. The form of the path is the same except the lights are indexed differently. The question is, is it a coincidence? To check that, let's move forward at n is equal to 5. This is path formed during the process. Let's compare the path highlighted in blue. That is, answer from n is equal to 3 with the code highlighted in red. Answer from turning on the light 0 for n is equal to 5. The form of the path is the same again, except the indices of the lights are different as well. But as the form of the path is the same, the length will always also be same. Now let's generalize the concepts we have observed before. Suppose you get n lamps, you will go first all the way from 0 to n and then again from n to 0. For this, we turn right and go to n, then we turn left and go to 0, then we turn right again. In this moment, you will arrive to lamp 1. 
Now you can notice the form of the path will be the same as having n minus 2 lamps. And you can obtain the path by copying the path for n is equal to 2, n minus 2 and adding plus 1 to all indices 0, 1 and 0. For n is equal to 1 becomes 1, 2 and 1 for n is equal to 3 as you have observed before. Since the path is the same, the distance walked will be exactly the same. So we get a simple algorithm. Suppose we calculate it for n is equal to 2. Then go from a lamp 0 to lamp n. Go from lamp n to lamp 0. Go from lamp 0 to lamp 1. And go like in the solution for n is minus 2. The length of the path for a given n is n plus n plus 1 plus length of the path for n minus 2. With other words, to calculate the answer for a given n, we need to use answer calculated before. This should be the aha moment to use dynamic programming as we can calculate the current state using previously calculated states. Here's how you can use dynamic programming. Let dpn be the length of the path if I have n lamps. Then dpn is equal to n plus n plus 1 plus dp n minus 2. For the dp to be complete, we need to initialize it. If I set dp0 is equal to 0 and dp1 is equal to 2, then all other elements of dp can be calculated. There is yet another simple one-line formula for this problem. Let's look at the values of n and answer produced by the dp to find a similar pattern in it. For n is equal to 0, answer is equal to 1. For n is equal to 1, answer is equal to 2. For n is equal to 2, we travel from 0 to 2, then from 2 to 0, and then 1. So answer is equal to 5. For n is equal to 3, we travel from 0 to 3, then to 0, again to 2, and then to 1. So answer is equal to 9. The sequence formed here is n plus n plus n minus 1 plus n minus 2 and so on till n. Seeing that all the values we observe the pattern is formed as n plus sum of all natural numbers till n. How you can simplify this to get a one line answer? For this you will probably need a well known fact that the sum of all natural numbers from 1 to n is equal to n into n plus 1 by 2. Using this, we can write the sequence as n plus n into n plus 1 by 2. The same sequence can be written another way by writing n as n plus 1 minus 1 and forming the sum of natural numbers till n plus 1 and subtracting 1 from it. By using this method, we get the answer as n plus 1 into n plus 2 by 2 minus 1. So now let's see how we can implement this formula in writing the code. Final code for the problem. Has to include IO stream using namespace std. Int main. Now we will input the number of test case. For that we have to declare the variable t. So int t c in t and now we have to run the loop for all the test cases so we are using the while loop here now we will take the variable as n for the number of coordinates and input it now we can write the formula here answer is equal to n into n, n plus 1 into n plus 2 by 2 minus 1 now finally we can output the answer and we are done with our code.